a website brief. See how to create a perfect one. So, you've decided to create a new website and that's great. However, no matter if you decide to find a digital agency that will create one for you, or if you want to build a website on your own, you should start with an absolutely essential starting point. A plan that will guide the creative process later on. Such a plan is called a website brief and it's an important element of creating a successful website. Today we will talk about how to create a perfect website brief. We have also prepared 50 questions for you to create a brief. You can download it on frontedhouse.com. The link is in the description to that film. What is a website brief? A well-written brief should thoroughly explain and define the problems that need to be solved by the website. It is supposed to provide all the important considerations and constraints that you should think of when building a new website. The brief should describe and design process and define what is expected as well as what the time frame and available budget are. With a well-written website design brief, all parties know what is expected of them. The design and coding stages are roughly explained step by step, which has a positive effect on the quality, efficiency, time and cost. When everyone is on the same page, you can be sure that your new website will be the right one for your business. Let's create a perfect website brief step by step. So, how to create a killer website brief? Let's go through the nine most important points of the website brief. Step one, gather basic data about your business. Start with writing an introduction of your brand. A good website requires a well-prepared brief that contains all the information about the website owner, their business and their company. It's basic yet important data. This is crucial if you want the design and development teams to become familiar with the brand and its vision, mission and values. This first step should determine the direction of the project and include a list of core stakeholders. This will help in defining who's responsible for particular deliverables. If you don't know how to kick off the project, think about an About Us page your existing website may include. Such a website should give a visitor an idea of how a company wants to be seen by the world. An About Us page may contain the history of the brand, its core beliefs, mission, vision, values, purpose and brand positioning, as well as the voice and tone. Collecting such data is the simplest way to gain a clear idea of the brand's fillers. Step number two. What is your project about? Time to state the purpose, aims and objectives of your future website. Any marketing tool exists to serve a purpose and it's the same with a website. This is why you should prepare an overview of the problems your website and, to be honest, your brand is going to solve. Before you decide on goals and objectives, answer the following questions. Do you want your customers to complete the transaction on your website? What do you want your customers to do when they land on your website. What calls to action do you want to include? What business functions is your website supposed to support? Step number three. The brand book is crucial. This step describes content and graphics for the project, design requirements and specs that will make the look and feel of the new website. Knowing such requirements early on 
saves a lot of money and time, fewer revisions and rework. While creating a website brief, make sure that the interface is appealing. Focus on illustrations and engaging content. Outline project responsibilities to define who's going to do what. The main project responsibilities would be design, content, imagery, professional photography, I mean, custom photography services, maybe, etc. Translations. Will the website be a multilingual? Post-launch marketing, PPC, I mean, pay-per-click, social media, email, and post-launch content updates. You will be managing the website content in-house or you require assistance. This step is highly dependent on the goal your website is about to serve. An e-commerce site and a blog have different requirements when it comes to design and content. If you want to build a marketplace, you will, for example, need product categories, payment methods, section, discount codes, etc. Don't forget that your website should be an extension of your brand. So you should pay attention to any guidance designers should adhere to. They should know if they are limited to certain brand colors, typefaces, logos, etc. Step number four, functionality of the project. Time to include the user experience stuff, functionality, features, and basic minimum requirements. They usually result from the purpose and objectives of the website, but still they should be included and described in your website brief. They should outline the website scope of the technical and creative possibilities addressed. Briefly speaking, you should list the major features that need to be coded. One of the good practices to implement is to separate the needs into two categories. Must-haves, I mean features and functionalities you cannot do without, and nice-to-haves, add-ons, features you want but aren't pivotal. Sometimes it can be hard to differentiate them, but it's all up to you and depends on the things you want for your business. Examples of functionalities may be account creation, filters and product listing, payment options, discount code functionality, wish lists, interactive media, online bookings, knowledge center, social media sharing, help desk for online sales, live chat, security, site guides, navigation, content section, subdomains, news section, gamification, etc. Where possible, you should include a brief description of each feature, including a list of features and functionalities together with relevant technical requirements and specifications upfront is the best way to avoid multiple revisions in the future and, in consequence, avoid additional costs. Step number five, page content, menus, general navigation. Time to describe a rough sitemap in your web design brief. How many pages and sub-pages do you want to include? Who will be responsible for producing the content and approving the entire process? Who will be responsible for producing the content and approving the entire process? When it comes to content, try to be as specific as possible. Consider external resources for writing the content if you don't have internal resources in that case. If you already have a website, Take the opportunity to verify if the existing content still meets the customer's needs. Very often, business owners consider website content a final stage of the project. It is the opposite. You should be aware of whether you have the resources or skills to create and then supply the text to go on the website. Decide who will be responsible for generating content and if you are able to provide any brand guidelines, images, videos, etc. During this stage, you should describe what you want to include in the menus and what the general navigation will be. A well-through structure 
and layout usually makes the user experience much better. The ultimate objective of most websites is to quickly find the information the user is looking for. Step number six, date and budget. No one like deadlines, that's a fact. However, there is a reason why you should include it in your website brief. Defining a deadline can help you narrow and focus your search. In addition, it may minimize the chances of spending more money than expected. Discuss how many people will be included in the project team. Your website brief should include job titles, roles and responsibilities. It is important to create a transparent schedule that includes possible delays. This will allow you and your team to better plan how to use resources over the development period. Make sure that the deadline and schedules are realistic though. It is also significant to set a development and web design budget. The truth is that a budget is something that can really affect the features and functionalities of your website. It allows for even more features and innovation of the opposite. It may be the reason why you have to prioritize the features that you consider most important. Setting the budget in a web brief also determines what kind of tools are available for your website. While establishing a budget, you should, among others, consider hosting, web design and development, post-launch maintenance, as well as digital marketing. For instance, when you are on tight budget, your website might be a little more basic, which may mean using a website builder or a simple CMS, content management services. If you have more money to spend, you can invest in complex design or tailor-made solutions. Step number seven, outline the technical issues. This step is especially crucial for large projects, including technical requirements and possible issues in your website brief may help you avoid scope creep later on. Think of technologies you can use, write them down and link them with features your website should have. Does it feature user logins? It is a e-commerce website? Do you need an API integration? What kind of user data will you include on your website? Those are examples of questions you should ask yourself while defining technical requirements and issues. If possible, on top of technical issues, your website brief should also include solutions to them. Is it possible to avoid the issues? If so, how to do it? The more details you include, the more likely you spend less time on testing and fixing bugs later especially when it comes to the features and functionalities that cost more than others to implement. Step number eight, introduce your competitors and the parties to model on them. Time to describe your industry's competitive landscape. Who's your main competitors? Which website have design you like? Compare layouts, themes, graphics, unique tools, etc. It is helpful to roughly describe who your competitors are and what they do. Answer the questions like, what is your competition doing? What do you like and dislike about their websites? List their strengths and weaknesses to define competitive pressures of your project. You can include their marketing activities that make their approaches effective. Are there any useful aspects you could use? An analysis of your competitors may be a great help for your designers and developers. Step number nine, website modernization. You may think that it's unusual to include post-launch modernization and maintenance in a website brief, but in fact, it is important, especially if you plan to launch several versions of the website targeting audiences in different countries. If so, what languages will you need? Technical aspects include things like hosting. Do you already have a web hosting for your business? If you do, verify 
your hosting package and make sure it is enough. The modern setup should be fully secure with regular backups and fast. Think of admin permissions and restricting some users' access to your website if needed. If you want your website to perform well, you should think about housekeeping upfront. Your website should be free of coding and speed issues, glitches and bugs, but in most cases they occur at some point. This is why you should decide who will be responsible for maintaining your website and fixing the bugs when they happen. If you collaborate with a web development agency that will build your website for you, your web design brief should clearly tell how often the actual analysis to find errors should be done. Also, make it clear how you expect any feature adjustments and interactions. Finally, you may consider promotion and digital marketing that you will promote your business. An online company is no different from a traditional one, so marketing activity should be overlooked while creating a website brief. You can list social media campaigns, SEO, I mean search engine optimization, email marketing, paid per click ads and display paid ads, content marketing and others. You can even include offline promotions like brochures or direct mail. And what about measuring your website success? Before you finalize your web brief, Think about how you want to measure and report your website's performance. This is crucial, especially if you have sales or visitor targets. As you can see, creating a website brief may result in a smooth and successful web design project with everyone having a clear picture of what they need to do and how. A web brief can help you track issues early and estimate them before they put your project in at risk. You can also download the 50 questions for you to create a brief. The link is in the description. At Frontend House and Leaky, we master building perfect websites that serve various purposes. If you want us to create one for you, we'll be happy to schedule a call to discuss your needs. If you need help with preparing a brief, we have got you covered too. Thank you and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.